Oh, I got to turn that off there. Hey, there we go. Our beautiful faces. How's it going? We're live once again. As always, Nate Mumford, Director of Sales Engineering, joined once again by John Bono, our G Selector expert here. And we're going to essentially talk about all the brand new G Selector 5.0 features that are coming right now in uh, beta. You can get these right now. You might notice I have my festive little holiday theme on here. So yeah. We got some Looks really good. cool things. Yeah, I got some cool <laughs> things to show you here. Um, so we're kind of going to talk and I'm going to think uh, I'm going to drive and John's going to uh, kind of talk about some great things that he's worked on for the uh, brand new G Selector. As I said, it's mm -hmm. beta right now. Always looking for beta users. Just reach out to your local RCS contact that could be sales, support, whoever it is. We'll get you in touch with John. He's going to hook you up with some of the latest and greatest G Selector features. Um, it is the holiday season, but as you know, hackers and all those guys do not sleep. So don't forget about your uh, backups, backup paths, um, Oster data exchanges, always looking for beta testers as well. Um, that's in there too. And we also have, of course, our um, rcsworks.com slash rcs dash live. It looks like they changed my little color scheme here because you're supposed to do an outline there, but that's the archive, rcsworks.com slash rcs-live. And we, of course, we have the chat here as well. Good morning. So if you're uh, watching us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or Twitter Live, we are here as part of RCS Live as well. So, um, John, let's dive right into it, shall we? Yeah, sure. First of all, good morning. Good. You, <laughs> yeah. Man, it's getting cold. Um, <laughs> Z Selector 5.0. Uh, I can say that this has been, oh, my chair is rolling. Uh, I can say that Z Selector 5.0 has been one of our greatest milestones. Uh, we've done a lot of work. Uh, people will ask, okay, uh, what's the features like? What's what's changed? Uh, like how many more and features we're going to see on the version? Mm -hmm. I need to tell most of the people that we've done a lot, a lot of work on our backend. That means there are things behind the scenes that, yeah, maybe you can't see it with your eyes, but actually we improved uh, speed. We implemented new technologies, making this selector more uh, able to scale more with mm -hmm. big stations, big databases, make it faster, faster processing, uh, and the most important, more secure. Uh, we had to upgrade some major components uh, to make sure that we are always on the latest and greatest technology. We always, as always, uh, we did some research for the future because we at RCS were always looking, you know, a little bit ahead. We need to see mm -hmm. what's coming in the industry. So we did our research, what's coming in the future, all of our cloud technologies and everything. And of course, we gave you some really cool new features, which um, you would ask when you create a milestone, what's the first thing you do, my friend Nate? You refresh your UI. You need to yes. give people a better UI. You need to make so to make you know your UI more friendly, happier, you know, smiley. We had some great people uh, working our designs. Uh, we worked together with uh, graphic designers. Uh, we had to go through so many, so many uh, mockups to see what we like the most. Um, but I think 5.0 is gonna be an amazing. Uh, milestone and you know i call it milestone because uh, after 5.0 we have more and more and better and more crazy technologies coming up in the future yeah and listen and obviously i have my christmas theme on here because this is our <laughs> last rcs live of the year so i had to do some christmas theme but we do have the dark mode that you've seen me in numerous rcs lives and John, do you want to talk about that dark mode a little bit? Yeah, actually, uh, I think I can. I can. We can. Yeah, switch. you want to share your screen? I can turn mine off too. We're gonna to kind of yeah. go back and forth and show some stuff here. This so. is this is this is so nice with it with with a new technology. You know, we're sharing our screens like whoa, like 15 <laughs> years ago, this was not even an option, right? Um, so I'm yeah. running uh, for people out there. We are we are in beta. Uh, that mm -hmm. means uh, we are releasing our beta versions uh, pretty frequent. Like we add more and more stuff. Uh, we are on beta one right now. Beta two is about to go live probably in a few days. Um, we know we still align. We still, you know, a little bit argue between the teams, like what is aligned or how it looks, you know, because when you refresh the UI, it's not only about the feature, you know, that you click schedule and schedule the music. It's also, oh, I feel like this looks a bit too dark. I think this, you know, needs to go one click on the left, one click on the right, one inch here. You know, it's it's yeah. when you redesign UI, you have many pairs of eyes, many designers 
looking at the software. Uh, first of all, this is a dark theme. Uh, we realize that dark theme is easier for your eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. There is a big research out there that says how better for your eyes the dark theme because you, it, it's, it's about how your eyes adjust to a computer screen. A few years ago with, you know, the CRT monitors, dark theme would be like an, a horrible idea. Mm. But right now with the new screens, uh, we realize that dark theme, uh, it's a great feature. And we see also our other software, Zeta, how well they do, how people are happy with a the dark theme. So we decided to go and implement the dark theme. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you see here, we have brand new icons, we refreshed an icon. So, so actually... We even changed actually the technology before the icons. So right now, when you change resolution or your font screen and everything, your icons can also adjust. Exactly. Yes. So key, um, right? we have a lot of users that want to kind of have, you know, nice big screens, by big fonts, all of that. And we can definitely accommodate that. That's correct. Uh, for example, first of all, you see that we have upgraded our components because you see also our graphics are better. Maybe yep. people cannot see right now the speed of the graphics because we are sharing screens. But trust me, the same. So, for example, um, in uh, you know we have here a style, and now you can see you can even say now when you change the fonts in the style, we can also say how big the icons can be. Yeah. So right now our icons can uh, you can adjust, you can scale them. This is something we didn't do in the past because you know it was we had to upgrade our technology. We have to you know you know <laughs> to do some nice stuff in our code. Um, our icons are also designed um, to make your life easier. Some people will say, oh. Oh, you change your icons when I'm confused. Trust me, it took me less than an hour to get used to the new icons. Yeah. Like you'll and, see. There, and you should point out too, they're in the same location. We're just updating the icons that are there. Yeah. Uh, they're going to, yeah, exactly. They're in the same locations. But if you ask me, I love them. They look so cool. Yeah. Um, so wherever you go in the software, if you go goals everywhere, you're going to see our refreshed UI, now have the huge icons, you know, everything adjusts very well. Um, also, uh, uh, right now, I don't know if you can tell, uh, Nate, I'm working on a 32 inches 4K screen. Uh, mm. And you can tell that, yeah, I have a, a crazy resolution. So, so right now you see that everything scales properly for people who want to use big screens like me. I'm blind and do have like 32 inches. And also, um, normally I work on the 43, uh, but it would be horrible for, uh, <laughs> for the screen share on the show. Uh, this is the one thing we did. Uh, we we spent a lot of time on that, uh, and we're very proud about our new UI. The second thing, it was a request from day one. People were ask were asking for more uh, flexibility on the song uh, or link window. You know yes. where you adjust song links. Yeah, we we gave a lot of flexibility. We give a lot of flexibility as a software, so we decided one why not redesign from scratch the song link window, and this is how it looks like. So we follow the same concept. Uh, actually, we follow the concept of the future, which sees everything has to be uh, floating. You should be able to adjust everything. You should be able to do whatever you want. Same concept as our friends uh, in Zeta. Uh, yeah, so I was gonna say, yeah, you'll see a lot of it will behave very similar to Zeta. So you're asking what's that looks the same. No, this is actually uh, a layout. This is something we designed a layout that looks like the, the legacy song link window. Uh, and you can totally adjust it. First of all, in order for my database here, I need to log in as an administrator uh, to adjust the layout. This is security. Mm -hmm. So actually you can tell which users uh, can do what. So you can really specify uh, user rights on the on uh, yep. who can touch the layouts, edit the layouts. So now I'm logging as administrator. So I have a brand new, I have an icon here. I can edit the layout. This is really powerful nate i can have as many screens as i want i can have as many tabs as i want i can organize the tabs the way i want and i can even implement mandatory fields mm -hmm. for example i can i can set up as a program director the rule that you cannot add a song if there is no sound code so yeah. if you try to save a song without sound code boom it's going to give you a warning you're missing sound code go back add sound code and then you can save this can save a lot of uh, time in production. You know, we know that people are missing. Hey, where is that? Like you forgot to add energy or you forgot to add the notes on something. Um, let's make a step back. I want to show a little bit around because I really like playing with the, the custom yeah. song going. I'm going to stay just, on the Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was gonna, just, to, just to recap here. So we're looking at this is the brand new G Selector song. And it's the same for links, obviously. So song link window. You can enable that by going, going under to tools and global settings. Um, there's a little option there to enable. 
And essentially, you know, you can keep this on or off. It's your choice. But, but the idea here is that you can completely customize this layout. And you can see what you have is kind of an on-off switch, right, John, where you can kind yeah. of enable the editing, move all your modules around, turn off the editor, save the layout. And once again, we encourage users to have multiple layouts. So, yeah. you know, for example, if you're, let's say, working on a multi-station workflow, right, you would just have to switch to, let's say, your multi-station layout. And you can have the multi-station tab, which was, you know, not buried per se, but it was one of the tabs, additional tabs that was in this previous song cart. You can just quickly jump to a different layout and have all of those fields nice and front and center. So what John's going to show is kind of showing you how you can customize this. But this is really about you as a programmer and your music philosophy and how you interpret this exactly. song link window. Actually, more layouts can help you uh, when you're dealing with different phase of your programming. An example, yeah. when I was a program director like eight years ago, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> twice a year I had to deal with AMTs, research. Like I had to have... So in this case, you can have, you know, a layout which is only research and can show you only the research values, media ID, artist title, because those are the, the layouts, the, the values you care. So you can have a multiple layouts and flip between the day. You know, each station has uh, needs different stuff, you know. Um, the other, and this is, this is powerful because actually you can get rid of stuff you don't need. For example, let's say that uh, me... Uh, I will make the design I will do like eight years ago. The first thing I care about is history. This history is too small for me. So I'll just take it, drop it, and now I can have, you know, a huge history tab with more Front history. Center. Yeah, I want to have it in the center because this is how I like it. I'm CHR station, so I don't care about complete work. Okay, goodbye. I don't need you. Mm -hmm. Go away. Uh, I can get rid uh, of uh, song group. I never use it. Uh, yeah. I don't need the album, for example. Yep. And you know what? Uh, the artist attributes. Um, maybe uh, I want to. I don't have. I don't. Wanna, I want to have like the vocalist first, or the, I want to have the vocal first, because mm -hmm. this is how I like it. Uh, I don't want to have instrument. I don't want to have artist group. Um, you know, it's totally flexible. And it, what I really, really like is when you design uh, your layout, you can always go on attributes here. And it can tell you which attributes you're not using. So I know, for example, that uh, I'm not using anywhere on my layout album. I'm not using anywhere category group. Mm -hmm. So this is something I can I can do it whenever. I can just go add them whatever I want. So I can have as many tabs as I want. I can create actually. I can even create my my, my own like this. I called it main. Hey, I don't like it. Uh, this is like John entries. Important stuff, or yeah. me, yeah. Or, yeah, or me, you know, this is me, yeah. Uh, and then if you have the user rights, you can also right click on a field and say, you know what, uh, title and artist are mandatory. That yeah. means whoever goes to add information, vocalist. yeah, like vocalist, exactly. Like you have to enter the information or you can hit save, straightforward, yeah. And, and let's uh, take a step back here, too, John. This is just sure. so cool, and there's yeah, so much we can it's, do it's here, it's powerful, actually. Yeah. So, I just want to point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just want to point out here. So again, one example you were talking about earlier, if you have, let's say, non-integrated Zeta automation, a lot of times you're using something like record number or a DA or something like that. You can always make that a required field, right? And instead of using the additional, you can make it in one of the primary uh, focuses here. And again, yep. the idea is that if you go, can you be fair, go back to the gear again and show that drop down the attributes sure. and the yeah. attributes pane. So the idea is that you first create the module, right? And as you can see, John gave a customized name to that module. And then you add the actual attributes inside of that. So, you know, you can see here, there's like station coding. There's what else you have here? It's a little, you got media, song attributes, stuff like so that. Just just to, 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 to tell, this is a default yeah. layout. This can be mm -hmm. your starting point. This actually behaves the same as our legacy songling window. So we created a layout that has everything. And trust me, Nate, in the future, just for fun, we're going to keep adding more and more layouts yeah. for people. And it's like a preset. Like you can, it's your starting point. You can take the layout and then play around it. But mm -hmm. definitely you can go blank and start your own layout from scratch. Like yeah. you can, new layout, you can reset the layout to the default. You can do, and you can even export uh, and share with your friends. You know, uh, I'm, I'm yeah. from the director in station A. Hey man, I created this so cool layout. Can you share it with me? Of course, you can export it, send him on an email. He's going to receive it and you can share the layouts. It's, it's, it's so flexible, Nate. 
And again, think about if you're, let's say, a VP of programming here, talk about macro workflows, right? And, and let's say John's the VP and I'm the program director of the station, whatever it is, you know, there's things that I have to put in requirement. Like, so there's a kind of set goals and rules and priority lists and all of that. And one of those is, you know, we do a spread on sound code or a spread on content. And I go to essentially John, right? And I say, hey, this is this great layout. You know, I'm going to send it to you, John, or John sent it to me. I can load it up. And then from there, John can say, these are the attributes that we care about for our, you know, clusters, top 40 stations. Yeah. And we care about title, artist, sound code, and let's say content, whatever it is. John can go and make those mandatory fields so that when I'm adding music, it's almost like a checks and balances, making sure that I don't forget something. Right. Yeah. Which is great. You know, so that when you know that there's no that not coded or you go, you find out after like, you know, two or three turnovers of uh, program directors and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I had a spread to like, you know, tempo, but there's like half the songs have no tempo. Stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that happening. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Or we don't make these things up. <laughs> yeah. Or you know what, Nate? Or the, the other thing I keep telling people, you can make it s simple. Some people say, you know what? I only yeah. I only need simple. You know, um, I don't need to I don't need to go because you know in the in their in the legacy, you have to go through tabs if you wanna, for example, uh for example, if you wanna do run dates, for example, you know, I have my run mm -hmm. dates here. Like I can just like you know, I have, can have like a tab with only my run dates or take my run dates, and you see pop. Now on the top of the screen, on my top of my screen, I have only my run date, or only my mm -hmm. run dates here. You know, pop in front of my screen, or you know what? On my on my, I wanna I wanna get rid of everything. I don't like this tab. Goodbye. I don't care about that. Yeah. Goodbye. I don't care about that. I wanna have only a basic screen. I wanna have only that screen. I wanna have artist title version, and you know what? Uh, mm, I'm gonna <laughs> say no because I just remember. I'll do it again. I don't want to mess my layout. layout. Yeah. No, Notice how wanna... John is essentially switching between the edit function, doing his changes, and then going back and saving the layout. You also notice too, by the way, that some of this data is grayed out, and that's simply because you know we're in the edit mode versus the exactly. display mode. We are in the edit mode. We are not seeing a song. It's just we're editing our layout. Right, Liam. so. I will. I, I want to give like a very extreme example. It's like things I've done. <laughs> I've done my life with G Selector <laughs> uh, from versions three. You know, I've, I've I've been doing some crazy things around my my career. So I would say I need uh, you can you can even have you know uh, for example links. Uh, when I when I was when I was just editing links, I always said, damn, like I want to have only something very simple. You know, I I, I only want to see my what I remember what I was looking at um, research. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I, I was only seeing, I think, the runtime and something else. And I said, you know what? I care only about my runtime. I care about my, my, my sound code for my links. And this is it. Leave me al alone. I don't need anything else yeah. when I add a link. So you can actually create a layout and say, you know what? It's my layout I use when... I actually, I'm going to save it just for fun, you know? Yeah. I'm going to save as layout John Light. Links. I'm going to, you know, uh, save those drone light. And then, you know what? This is this is my layout when I uh, when I add my Christmas links. And you know what? Now I'm serious. I have to do serious work. So I have to get back to my normal. I'm going to save my layout. And pop. Mm -hmm. it's, it, I, I can flip from one layout to the other. The layouts can be user-specific, station-specific. So, again, you have all the flexibility. Your program director can have different layout on station A. And then your music editor can have a different layout on station B. So... In other words, Nate, whatever you have in mind, you can do it. Yeah. Um, for time no purposes. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. time purposes, just to a kind of a brief recap, we're talking about the brand new features in 5.0 with John Bono, and we're talking about the UI experience. So we're going to have the default dark mode layout. Um, you have options to enable or disable the song link custom window. And by the way, that's also could be station specific, John. So for yep. example, if you have, let's say, four stations in your cluster, and you have the powerhouse, the primary station, let's say they get research and stuff like that, you might have that station's layout has research front and center, where the other ones don't because they don't get research or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, again, it's about really identifying your workflow and, flow and giving you the custom flexibility and the power to really design this, right? And this is just the start of some of the really cool things that we can do with John and his team are doing uh, with G Selector. And as John was saying beforehand, you know, these are things that we very actively 
you know, consciously research and look into and try to maximize as well. So let's, are we talk about the kind of behind the scenes, right? We talk about the revamp. Yep. That's, that's right. where we kind of give it the five Oh versus the four nine one or whatever it is. Um, and we talk about the back end performance enhancements. We talked about the UI. Uh, do you want to talk about the jobs feature? Do you want me to show so, that one or? Sure. Yeah. Uh, we've added one more job feature. Um, we, um, and I, I want to get, your, you know, John, I, since you're here, I want to yeah. just get your opinion on the jobs here. I've done some past videos with agent or support lead in that. And I want to kind of, here, let me go and grab this. I'll put mine on here. Oh, um, I want to talk about your, your interpretation of the jobs feature. Cause there's some really, really powerful things here. Again, tools, configuration, and then jobs. And I want to kind of get your, you know, your expert opinion on some of these. Uh, if you ask me, uh, jobs as another big, big feature we created, it gives so much, you know, you can, um, I will say, I wish it was there eight years ago. Right. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah. Totally yeah. with you. First of all, it provides you safety. I was, you know, that back then, and most of us out there, I know many people do that. We have entries on the Outlook calendar says, run housekeeping, take a backup <laughs> or the most important. Flop out the floppy disk. Yeah, like uh, not only that, but I know people, I, you know, most of the stations right now get, I'm not going to say about the main FM stations, not many people do that, but for the web stations, many people say schedule. Remember mm -hmm. like midnight, oh my God, did I run the scheduler for next week? Do I have schedule on my station? Yeah. And uh, of course, there are many lucky people out there. They have the system integrated with Zeta. Zeta can call the scheduler. Yep. That's fine. But now you have the power to call for schedule on G Selector directly. So yeah. we have a new job here. It's a generally schedule. You can actually say, uh, it's you can open the, the, the job if you want, Nate. Um, you can ask the system to see, you know, whatever X days in the future. You can ask, tell, you know, just schedule the next unscheduled day. Uh, you can ask him to schedule only songs. Some people schedule, for example, they want to schedule only the links. Um, or you can, uh, you know, you have still uh, the same flexibility. You can have, uh, you can, of course, get an email, uh, you know, reminding you that, you know what, uh, I was able to run my schedule. You know, there is schedule on your station. Uh, and this, if you ask me, this is like a, a feature like that saves a lot of time in many programmers out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing, um, I know that some people out there they don't want they don't want to run uh, schedule th uh, through Zeta for uh, traffic integration purposes purposes or anything. So mm -hmm. if you if you if you don't want to run the scheduler through Zeta, you can always run the scheduler from here. Now we have the same options here. In general terms, jobs. If you ask me, if I was a programmer setting up a station right now, I will uh, do definitely four. I would activate four jobs. I will always have my backup job every night. I will ask the system to get a backup. Uh, definitely, I will keep the the service beat, uh, checking that all my services are running. So no surprises about that. And that's um, just making sure that you're you're connecting to this G Selector server. That's what that service exactly. heartbeat means. It's heartbeat. Actually, we send so we send a beat and checking that all the services are healthy running because G Selector is not a simple service. It's a bunch of yeah. complicated services. Okay. Um, the other thing I will have on my weekly job is housekeeping. I will say every Saturday, run a housekeeping, uh, just to be sure, you know, just to fix my database. Just, yeah, this is as you were saying beforehand. If I had this, because I used to always, you know, Fridays running around, last minute production, I'd be like, did I run housekeeping? I can't remember if I did or not. Oh to my have God. it I just can't... knowing the background there is just, I wish I had this. I can take you back to master control days. I could explain <laughs> our process of housekeeping back then. But yeah, yeah, we we know most of our people from V12 days, V15, whatever, we know how important it is to, to run housekeeping, okay? Yep. And then just in case, I would have my generate schedule job. Just in case, you know what? Why, why also it's great? Because generate schedule job is also like hitting the schedule button. Example, I have Zeta scheduling a day ahead. Okay, but someone uh, decided to double click the day, generate the day. You know that if you generate the day without scheduling, it yes, will open it the position. It yep. will create a stroke. So I will see just unscheduled song, unscheduled song. But when it's midnight, midnight and time for Zeta to call for the scheduler, because the day is open, Zeta thinks there is schedule. And this is a correct behavior because we don't know what everyone yeah. needs. You, you told it to build a clock. You told it to build a day. Yep. That means that what's going to happen, we had case in support saying, oh, guys, uh, Zeta didn't schedule. No, it's scheduled, but someone yep. generated the day. 
this is a fail safe uh this is a very great uh feature because mm. uh generate scheduling deselector will just ignore if the day is open or not and it will it's, it will like push the schedule button every time even if there is schedule it will push it again nothing is going to happen you know pretty well if the day is scheduled and you just schedule again no harm on the system but this is safety especially if you have automated stations that you know you look you know once a week or once a month this is uh, a great feature to make always sure that you have schedule ahead of time yeah it's i think cool. those yeah i think those four jobs uh if you ask me are the most important i would run them uh especially housekeeping backup uh we have so many uh stories about um uh security right now so if you mm -hmm. ask me uh, that's the most important and i have to say uh i can give like a a cheese for the future Ooh, versions in 2022. I love this. yeah we're gonna bring more jobs like we have more jobs in mind uh that include things that you do daily and you hate doing manually so trust me there are more nice things about the jobs coming in the future in yes. 2022 um, yeah, some really, really cool things. And by the way, just kind of talk about some, again, some macro workflows for those VPs of programming and all of that. I know we have a lot of VPs who have requested this. Yeah, we have a couple options here, like check publication status, check schedule, stuff like that. And what John and his team did is everything has kind of a email with success and failure. That includes licensing, by the way. We've got, that's one of those jobs that we put in the licensing window. But you can also go and you can put on there essentially, like show me if the license fails, whatever reason, right? Yeah. And you can make that email, you know, the format captain or whatever it is. And let's just say, you know, going back to macro workflows, we can do a, you know, check schedule and make sure that the schedule is there or it's been created. And we can do a, if it's not, send me an email, stuff like that. So there's always kind of some, as John was saying, these checks and balances, these safety measures in place to make sure that your, uh, your station's running smoothly. And let's be honest, because you know, programmers these days, we're, we're doing blogs, we're doing podcasts now, we're working on the web, we do engineering stuff. So there's very, and you have a lot of remotes. So let's just say there's a day that you're running around and you have to get a spot in, but you have to run to a bar to do a live appearance. And all of a sudden you're like, did I know if market X, Y, and Z actually did their logs or not? I can't remember if I checked that. Now you get an email, you can go on your phone, say, hey, I got a failure that, you know, Every day at three o'clock, I run a report and say, who has not done their music logs yet? Stuff like that that's in there. Uh, so for time purposes, John, we kind of covered that. Um, I'll give you one more. If you got a question for John or myself, here's your time to get it in there. Uh, John, I know this has come up a lot of times. So Andres had a question about the new G selector. Is it possible to install on Windows 11? And I know that we've been actually testing that. Uh, yeah. We obviously, of course, grow with any type of Windows and operating system or SQL. But I thought I'd give you a chance to kind of comment on that a little bit. Uh, we've, we, our QA department, because this, you know, came uh, Windows 11. Uh, we, we, first of all, we have corpor cooperation with all that. So we received Windows 11 uh, earlier. And we run something we call Sandy Test. So yes, we can confirm that for now we haven't seen any issues with Windows 11 or even right now we're testing the latest Windows server. Uh, I don't remember exactly the number out of my head. Yeah, it's but <laughs> whatever the number is, but yeah. Like it was 2019, the latest, so probably it's 2022 now. So we're yeah. also testing uh, the latest Windows server, but we keep we trying to always test ahead. So we tested uh, G Selector 4.9 and 5.0 on Windows yeah. 11. So, yes. And I can tell you too, I just installed it on some of our other salespeople's laptops just yesterday. So, oh, uh, they're great. operating. You I see, can tell you more right testing. Now. <laughs> yeah, Windows Windows 11, man. They, they, I'm trying to find the copy and paste function. I'm like, where did they do the copy and paste? Oh, they turned it to icons. Okay, great. So I like it. Um, that's in there too. So, any anyway, last minute for questions. So, again, uh, you can be a beta user right now for G Slutter 5.0, that great new UI, the scalable icons, the customized song link window, the expanded jobs in there as well. There's some really, really cool things here. And don't forget, too, by the way, you know, going back to John's uh, giving John a little credit here, um, you know, the clocks and the flex clocks. I don't know if you're utilizing that yet or not, if you're still on 481 or 480, if you're, you you're should looking go at 49. Yeah. yeah, if, if you're not in 49, clocks are so there. cool. Um, and again, that's just clocks and assignment. You can see here, there's that grid, that floating grid. It's just what a really cool um, option for scheduling that John and his team designed this. So again, if you're not familiar with that, we have some past videos on flex clocks too. Um, John, anything else you want to add before we head out? No, uh, I think we're covered. Uh, I just want to tell the people that really 5.0 is a milestone and you should really try it.
Yeah, you guys did great work on it. We're really excited for it. Again, you can do a beta user right now. Uh, so we are taking this our last RCS live for a couple of weeks. We're taking a break for the holiday. So of course you can always check out our archive. Let's see if I fix my graphic here for a second. You can always <laughs> fix uh, the, I see, that's weird. Okay. It's rcsworks.com slash rcs dash live, or you can of course go to rcsworks.com and there's a blog section there to see all of our videos and write up some of these videos as well. I always say this, John, especially when you're on here, I love picking John's brain when it comes to music scheduling. So if you're watching this and you're curious about just general scheduling concepts, right? And, you know, I always joke around, you know, from here in the States versus Europe, there's a little bit kind of different philosophy on how they yeah. do things. And John's take on scheduling with categories and content is phenomenal. And there's a video on there. I'm sure if you just Google John's name in the search bar or go to the RCS Live Archive, there's two videos that we did with John that are in the past that are just really makes you think for a second about, you know, adding a goal for content. Uh, it's mm -hmm. phenomenal. So John knows this stuff too. So if you were curious about that, I highly recommend you watch that past video. And John, if you don't mind, we're going to have more videos with you sure. in 2022. Talk about some scheduling stuff, right? Yeah, sure. And also, you know, we should say that, yeah, uh, probably Nate and I are going to take some vacation, but our support is always here for you. So if you have any yeah. questions, don't hesitate. Yeah, absolutely. You can always sure. contact our support. The guys are here 24-7 for you. Yeah. So sweet, John. Hey, happy holidays. Have happy a holidays, Nate. New Year. I know I'm going to try to see you like in a couple hours, but still. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we'll see you again next year for RCS Live. We'll keep going on Thursdays, all of that good stuff. Don't forget the archive. Have a fantastic holiday for you and your family. Be happy, healthy, safe, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you in a bit. Have a great one. Bye-bye.